strong female leads. They've been around for a long time, but it seems like around a decade or so back, Hollywood decided this is a marketing strategy. This is an angle we need to take now and act like it's never been done before. A woman holding her own in a film. How progressive, how ingenious, it's perfect. Well, today I'm gonna cover this a little bit, talk about why they've been making some bad decisions as of late and how they can course correct. It's really not that hard, in fact, they were already doing it before. Let's rant. Before I begin, make sure to run up the side of a guy's leg, spin around his neck and serpentine down like some sort of a spazzy monkey, throwing him to the ground and then punch that subscribe button as all female leads do. Because then you won't miss a single video from me, whether it's a movie review, a rant, a roast, a live stream, all film related all the time. Movies always go through cycles. There's always new trends or new hot things to try out and then mirror. Whether it's John Wayne and Clint Eastwood leading the charge for Westerns, or Neo dodging bullets in the Matrix leading to a bunch of copycats, or again with Keanu Reeves as John Wick setting a new standard in action film. There's always different flavors that keep going for a while until it gets stale and they have to move on to something new. Well, when it comes to movies starring women, every genre, almost, has been hit very hard. You have amazing dramas with a lot of great actresses. Look at Fried Green Tomatoes or A League of Their Own. Erin Brockovich, ready to Erin choke a bitch if you get in her way. Julia Roberts is a powerhouse. Thelma and Louise taking matters into their own hands and their lives. Musicals like Grease, Hairspray, or more recently La La Land continue to impress and showcase female talent. All bases were pretty equally covered. Hell, even horror movies you can argue women dominate in, not so much as the antagonist, but certainly as a protagonist. Oftentimes they're sexualized, sure, but they're still there, they're still getting the job done. Nev Campbell narrowly escaping the ghost face killer several times over. One of the queens of Scream, Jamie Lee Curtis, has been kicking Michael Myers' ass for like three decades now. The woman just won't die. The character, not the actress. I hope Jamie Lee Curtis outlives me. Strong female leads that continuously knock it out of the park, Kristen Bell, never not working. I've seen her in like a billion different things, and she's always delightful. She's always sharp, witty, funny, and on point with her comedic timing. When it comes to action movies, obviously it's very heavily skewed towards guys. Believe it or not, there's just things that guys like more than women, and one of them is watching other dudes kick each other's asses. So you get those diehards, you get the lethal weapons, you get the last Boy Scouts, you get those wicks, those nobodies. There's so many movies. The, the beekeeper, the transporter. I think we've covered every single profession and somehow managed to find a way to make it about fighting dudes or shooting them. Bad boys, we got the cops. But even in the action sense, there have been plenty of examples of female-led movies. It's just not a very good ratio. Angelina Jolie's made an entire career out of being a badass in films like Wanted, Salt, the Tomb Raider franchise. Then you have Uma Thurman, one of my favorite action heroines in fucking Kill Bill. She is a beast in that movie. The ones that always get brought up are honestly boring at this point, but yes, yeah, Sigourney Weaver in the Alien franchise, of course, as Ripley is fantastic. Sarah Connor from Terminator 1 and 2, and then unceremoniously killed off screen in Terminator 3, which is freaking ridiculous, but we'll move past that. And Gina Davis is no slouch either. We gotta give a shout out to Gina Davis for just being a badass. But listen, I, I don't wanna go down a rabbit hole of all, all the amazing movies women are in. There's a, I can't count them, I can't list them all. They, they are a broad spectrum of films. But the point of this video is to talk about how stupid the marketing has been, and the writing of modern action heroes in the female space. Because they're trying so desperately to make it a thing. They're trying to make fetch happen in a genre dominated by men. Why? I don't honestly know. Because they do it from the wrong approach. Guys are simple and dumb for the most part. We like stuff that blows up. We like people kicking ass and we like looking at a dude that's super strong, jacked, punching through people's faces. And then we can kind of somehow pretend because we are so basic that we could see ourselves somehow doing that. I don't know how many times I've talked to someone or I myself have thought after watching a movie 
Like, okay, yep, I'm going to get in shape now. I'm going to train like Rocky. And before you know it, I'm going to be in the ring with Apollo Creed. Or you go home and you kind of like look at the lay of the house, take stock of what you have and go, okay, if an intruder comes in, say there's one or two, I can probably run up the side of the wall, Keanu Reeves style, Neo down on him, punch his face in, Parker Posey flip, I don't even know what that means, into a spinning bird kick Chun-Li style, break the guy's neck. He drops his gun, I pick it up, shoot this other fucker three times, he drops down, his gun goes, and then I kill like four more. It's ridiculous, but this is the kind of stuff that sometimes enter, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's, maybe it's just me. We're gonna move past it. I think where this train really started to derail was Ghostbusters. The infamous 2016, I think, don't quote me on that, with Melissa McCarthy and Friends, the all-female version, they did the gender swap. Why? They thought it would work. Guys already love Ghostbusters. We have them locked in. How do we draw in more? How do we get the women? Because I'm sure they have stats. I'm sure they have numbers of the amount of men that watch Ghostbusters and love it as opposed to women. So if we can capture everyone, then we have everyone. But that's just not how things work. Let's take a brand new movie, Barbie. Made a billion dollars. Why? Is it because guys love Barbie? Kind of. It's because guys think Margot Robbie's hot. And boys growing up thought Barbie was hot, especially undressing her. That's what it's, that's seriously what it is. It's sad. It's sad and pathetic, but that's what it is. So when you make a Barbie movie, you've captured the women because they grew up with Barbie and it sounds like it's going to be feminist driven. It's going to have some messages. It's not going to be just stupid crap. Whether you agree with it or not, or you're like me and you were kind of just fed up with it by the hour and 40 minute mark. It's like, yes, we get it. We get the messages. Very good. Very, very well done. Let's move on now. Um, but guys went because you have hot Barbies in there. And it looked like a fun comedy. Hot women, comedy, easy sell. And it made a billion dollars. This is not rocket science. I don't know what the fuck they're doing over there in Hollywood. Why they think this has to be so hard. It really doesn't. They came out with a dumb movie called Beekeeper. With Jason Statham. <laughs> Playing a literal beekeeper, but he also works for an organization called the Beekeepers. So he, his secret place he works for also ended up becoming his real profession. It's so stupid. And there's like bee puns throughout. It made a dumb amount of money. It made so much stupid money for what it probably cost to make. That thing was probably written in an afternoon. While the person writing it was drunk off their ass and thought, let's do Beekeeper, Jason Statham. And it worked. Because that's how simple it is. That's how easy it is. But Hollywood is determined to make things as hard as humanly possible by coming up with these dumb ideas. And yes, you can chalk it up to a bunch of, uh, I don't know, you want to say liberal arts people working in Hollywood now, writing these scripts or in their higher positions and they can greenlight this stuff. You can chalk it up to them just having the worst ideas ever because they live their lives on social media. So they see a bunch of people championing this stuff and they're like, yeah, we're going to go to this movie and screw that movie, but they don't show up. And they, for some reason, haven't learned a lesson yet, so they keep doing it. So Ghostbusters comes out, it loses money. It still made a decent amount, but not enough for what it costs, apparently. So it lost money. They gave up on that. But they didn't give up on that message, which is strong female leads. You need to come out and see it. We have the first female Ghostbusters. We have the first female Marvel superhero with Brie Larson. She's a hero? No, she's a her. Oh, they put that bold, proud in front of you on display on every fucking ad. Her oh, they made that the movie instead of the character. It came down to identity politics. It came down to her gender instead of what she's actually doing in the film, what she represents in the film. Wow, it's a cool new character. No, it's a female character. No one cares. No one cares. More guys saw the Marvels and Captain Marvel than women did. So the marketing doesn't work. And keep in mind, Captain Marvel did incredibly well, and it was entirely because of where that movie was wedged between Infinity War and Endgame. And if you don't believe me, look at the numbers the Marvels did. It made so little money, not only is it not getting a sequel, but I believe it was the lowest grossing movie in MCU history now. Look at Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. 
you are getting guys into the seats because it's freaking Wonder Woman and she looks amazing and she's kicking ass. These are simple things. Look at the Charlie's Angels movies from years back with Cameron Diaz and Lucy Liu and Drew Barrymore. They made two of these dumb movies because they were loud, explosive, high octane action with good looking women kicking ass. This is not just a women thing. Guys like looking at good looking dudes too. That's why Thor is played by Chris Hemsworth and Chris Evans is Captain America and Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. These are good looking guys. They're suited up. I think Chris Hemsworth's shirtless in pretty much every movie he's ever been in, contractually obligated. Will Smith was the same way. And uh, people love Will Smith movies, or they did, till people, until Chris Rock didn't keep his wife's name out of his fucking mouth. Then things got a little sideways. Elizabeth Banks comes out with a new Charlie's Angels movie. It's modernized, AKA, it's terrible. She casts very attractive actresses, but then completely misses the point of Charlie's Angels, which is to make these femme fatales, these super attractive women who are using their sexuality to get in front of guys and then take them out. Instead, it becomes a feminist propaganda piece, at least in the ads. The movie itself, pretty harmless, pretty lame, but the ads really made it about empowering women and knocking guys down. And that's the biggest component of this and why guys especially, and I think women roll their eyes too, are so fed up with this shit. This marketing tactic that, believe it or not, often isn't even in the final product of the movie, but it pisses people off so much they don't go and watch it. So you see the trailers and it's like, oh, the guy's bad or the guy's an idiot and the woman's like, I don't need a man to do this. And it's just so preachy and it talks down and insults the base that they're trying to go after. Or at least the base that they thought they had locked in, which are the action junkies, primarily men. Star Wars comes out with Rey. The Force Awakens, pretty well received. I would say the majority of people really liked it. There was people that hated it, of course. But then Last Jedi comes out, spits in the face of, I would say, half of the, the fans. Maybe more. Maybe less. It's got to be at least half. When Luke Skywalker throws that thing over his shoulder, Rey knocks him down, talks down to him, disgusted by him. It's spitting in the face of the fans. Too many. Too many. I was upset with it for a myriad of reasons beyond that. But taking Rey at face value, she's a street rat from some desert planet who doesn't know her parents, yet she can fly a Millennium Falcon perfectly. She knows the Force pretty perfectly already. He has no real growth to this character at all. They have no idea what to do with her. So they have to keep pushing this shrouded past element because she's already mastered pretty much everything else. It's boring, it's lame, it gives Daisy Ridley absolutely nothing to work with, and I thought she was great. It's just the character sucks. Poorly written. There's been a lot of movies that have also gender swapped males to females, basically because they don't know what to do with the property, they have no interesting story to tell, so they just do a gender swap and they call it a day. Like, oh, okay, now Doctor Who's a woman. Now we can go a different route with things in the story. Instead of what women want, let's do what men want. Instead of Ocean's Eleven, let's do Ocean's Eight. And then it's gonna be women this time. They also put them in movies where they sideline the main male protagonist. I'm looking at you, Indiana Jones 5. They'll then take it further and they'll for some reason attach a secondary characteristic to this woman so they can check a box, tip the hat to their audience, and say, listen, not only is this woman along for the ride, she's also gay. You're welcome. What's the point of that? Eh, it just, it's just there. It's just the thing now. It's not actually going to have anything to do with the rest of the story. It's never really going to get brought up again. It's not going to have it like a female love interest that's going to come along that she's going to have to help. It's just there. We're putting it out there and that's that. Now, where I may differ from some is I don't really care that much if I'm watching a movie with action heroes like Kate, for instance, or even Harley Quinn, the emancipation of whatever that stupid Birds of Prey thing is called. And they're beating up a bunch of guys that are twice their size. Uh, they're a lot bigger looking than them. And you have this skinny 90 pound woman soaking wet, kicking the shit out of a whole gang of them. That doesn't really bother me. I know some people are like, oh, yeah, right. Like this person could ever take out this group of people. It's all fantasy at the end of the day. As long as the movie gives me a reason to at least get on board with this character. If they come from a background of like a CIA operative or special forces or something... Good enough. She's got some training. We, we can get invested. Or she's got a superpower or something like that. Fine. 
Because I look at a movie like John Wick. We're on the fourth John. We're on the fifth John Wick. If it ever, if it comes out, if it gets made. But this is, keep in mind, there's four of these. This dude, Keanu Reeves, is what fifty? He's in his fifties now. Is he sixty? I don't fucking know. He's old though. He's old to take out like a thousand guys. He's shot multiple times. He's hit by several cars just in one movie alone. The guy has been through hell and back. And I am supposed to believe that he can handle his own in a room full of people. No, it's ridiculous. And I love Keanu Reeves and I love the John Wick movies, but that's absurd to be like, oh, this little girl taking these guys out, that's too much. But my guy John Wick over here, he could easily do it. He get This spry, young, 50-some-year-old, he can easily handle all these young guys with Kevlar vests and whatnot. I mean, come on. It's it, At the end of the day, it's all fantasy. It's all silly nonsense. In reality... John Wick would probably have been killed by the fourth dude he came into contact with because he'd get shot in the face. End of discussion. All things aside, there's definitely been a disgusting trend in Hollywood over the last decade to make all the men evil, prop women up. And no, it's not across the board. And there can still be movies that do that and they're not, you know, so-called woke or have an agenda. They're just, that's what the movie is. I just saw one actually where it's two lesbian women the guys are all dirtbags in the movie, to, but, but to be fair, pretty much everyone in the movie is a dirtbag. It's the new movie by A24, Love Lies Bleeding. I thought it was a good movie. It was actually really good until it kind of falls apart in the final act. But still, for the most part, very, very interesting film to watch. So even if it has all the tropes, all the cliches, all the basic formula, it can still be good. It can still be fun to watch. It doesn't have to be yelled at and shamed. You can still get entertainment out of this stuff. Because again, it's all trends all the time. Hollywood's not that creative. If one thing works, they will continue to hit that thing until it doesn't. And no, we cannot look at some of this stuff and say, it didn't work. Why are you still doing this over there? It's not always one-to-one, -one because if that was the case, Barbie should have lost money. It should have gone like negative dollars, because that movie's more woke than anything else on the planet. But the fact remains that you have to sell to the right audience. Hot leads, check. Nostalgia bait, check. Comedy, check. It has all the things it needs to drive in a big audience. So... If they would have came out with the Charlie's Angels a couple years ago like they did, and they would have sexified them, if they would have cast correctly, if they would have made it this loud, bombastic, awesome action, over-the-top film, you would have had that guy audience locked in. But because they went the route they did, they lost a lot of them, and they didn't gain up any women. They didn't make up the difference. The marketing has been so bad over the years for these movies that people were genuinely scared that they were going to recast James Bond with a woman. They thought, oh my god, it's over. James Bond's now going to be a woman. It's gone. It's going to be Jane Bond or whatever. They, they've come out and said that's not happening. But that's just how far it had gone. Where it really did feel like Hollywood hated guys. They didn't want to make movies for them. Even though if you actually paid attention... There was a male-driven movie coming out every week. Most of it's still by white dudes. I pointed that out a couple years ago. The video, I guess, was too obnoxious for people because I was being a little smarmy, a little too smart-assy about it. But it's true. Every week, there's still a leading male movie being made. Oftentimes, it's a perfectly generic, safe film. Not that interesting, so people don't even care about it. But yeah, there's still very much there. There's still very much a male-driven thing. It's just that... The audience is primarily men going to movies. If you look at the stats, that's just how it bears out. And so Hollywood's always trying to find ways to catch more people. If they want to, just keep coming out with Taylor Swift movies because holy shit, that movie made a lot of money. And that was primarily women and young girls. But regardless, you got a different audience for that one. You got it with Barbie. So maybe there will be a new trend going forward where they're going to figure out a new formula. They're going to get out the Bunsen burner and start mixing concoctions and they'll go, all right, we got a new thing figured out. It's going to work this time. It remains to be seen. But let me know your thoughts on all of this. Have I hit on some things you've been thinking about? Have I touched on them but not gone far enough? Let me know. Like the video if you want. Please subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews, rants, roasts, all that stuff every week. It's all movies all the time. Oh, and if you really appreciate me putting myself out there on these rants, I would love if you just super thanked me right below this video. There's a super thanks icon. You can say, hey, Adam, this was awesome. Here's 10 bucks. Keep doing your thing. I'd really appreciate it. All right.
Take care.